Hello, and welcome to this fifth in a series of six films about the standard level kinetics topic. Here we're going to be looking at the, uh, some of the factors that affect the rate of chemical reactions, and in particular, we're going to be uh, explaining the ones that affect how often particles collide, and they are concentration, pressure, and surface area. And in order to do this, we're going to call on collision theory, which we covered in, uh, in the third film of this series. So if you haven't watched that one yet, it would certainly be useful if you did that before watching this one. We're also going to look at why the volume of a solution should not affect the rate of a chemical reaction going on inside it. Okay, just as a very quick reminder of what we did do in that third film about collision theory, we said that in order for two things to react together, three things had to happen essentially. Particles had to collide, but not only did those particles had, have to collide, they had to collide with enough energy to get over the hump, the energy hump, or in other words, to exceed the activation energy, and they had to collide in the correct orientation. Now, as I've just mentioned, we're not going to be talking about energy in this film. We're going to be talking about the factors that affect how often particles collide. And the first of those that we're going to look at is concentration or pressure. Now I've decided to put these two together because they mean very similar things. If you think about what concentration tells us, it tells us about how many moles there are per litre. In other words, it's a measure of how many particles there are in a particular space, which is exactly what pressure refers to. Okay, if we've got a high concentration, we've got lots of particles dissolved in every litre. If we've got high pressure, it means we've got lots of gas particles in a particular space. Anyway, let's have a look at what changing the concentration or pressure, what effect that will have on how often particles collide and therefore the rate of a chemical reaction. Okay, we're going to look at two diagrams here. We're going to look at one that refers to a low concentration and one that refers to a high concentration. And I suppose the first thing that you notice here is that there's a lot more particles here than there is there. Okay, but concentration is more than just a is it's about more than just the number of particles. It's about the number of particles in a particular space. So really, when we're talking about what's different between these two things, we're not just talking about how many particles there are. Okay, we're talking about how many particles there are in this particular box or in a per unit volume. Okay, now we could imagine a situation where I made this box bigger and I had exactly the same concentration of particles in the other part of the box. The chances of them colliding hasn't changed, even though I've got more particles. Okay, it's about how many there are in a particular space. So be precise about this when you're explaining the effect of concentration and pressure on rates. It's not just about how many there are, it's about how many there are per unit volume, or per litre, or per centimetre cubed, or per dm cubed, or whatever unit of volume you choose. Now, the fewer particles that you have per unit volume, the less often they're going to collide. So just as it's important to talk about not just how many particles there are, but how many there are in a particular space, it's important not just to talk about how many collisions there will be, but how often the collisions will take place. Or in other words, how many collisions there will be per unit time, or per second, or per minute, or whatever unit of time you choose. Okay, but the more often particles collide, the higher the rate of reaction will be, in spite of the fact that we're not changing their energy. Okay, so the chances of a collision having enough energy hasn't changed, but how often particles colliding has increased if we increase the concentration of pressure because there are more particles per unit volume. Okay, let's go on to surface area because changing the surface area also affects how often particles collide, but it doesn't affect how much energy they have in their collisions. So if we now look at these two diagrams, we can see what is supposed to be the same mass of solid in both cases, so the same number of particles overall. But in this one, the chances of a green particle colliding with a solid particle are smaller than they are here because the surface area isn't as great when you've got large chunks of solid. Okay, If you break a solid up into smaller pieces, you'll increase its surface area and therefore there will be not more particles, but more particles exposed to collisions. Okay, So collisions will happen more often. Not just more collisions, but more often.
Okay, so that's how we can explain the effect of surface area on rate, because we can talk about how often collisions happen based on how many particles there are exposed to collisions. Right, now something that people often misunderstand a little bit is um, how the volume of a solution will affect how quickly the reaction will take place inside it. Now we've kind of touched on this already when we were talking about concentration and pressure. We imagined that we had a bigger container with more stuff in it, in this case more liquid. Now if you think about it, if these solid particles here are reacting with the liquid particles around them, it shouldn't matter how much liquid I place in this space above this liquid. Okay, It's not going to affect how often particles collide where the reaction is taking place. Okay, So in other words, the volume of a solution should not affect the rate of a reaction. It doesn't affect how often particles collide, even though it increases the number of particles. It doesn't increase the number of particles per unit volume. Okay, So that's why the volume of a solution should not affect the rate of a chemical reaction, even though people often get fooled into thinking it does when they're in the sort of pressure situation of an exam or a test. Okay, just very quickly, just going to emphasize once again how it is possible to lose marks very easily on this topic, even though it sounds like you know what you're talking about. So if you're talking about particles, don't just say that there's more of them. Okay? So if you're talking about concentration or pressure or surface area, there's not more particles, it's more particles per unit volume if you're talking about concentration or pressure. Okay? Now the unit volume could be any unit you choose, or you can just say per unit volume. right? And there's not more particles when you change the surface area. There are more particles exposed to collisions. Okay? So easy ways to lose marks are to not mention these things. It's just to talk about the number of particles. And similarly, there's not just more collisions. Okay? I could have a very big box with hardly any particles in it. I could have a very small box with that same number of particles in it. They're going to collide more often. Okay? So we need to talk about the frequency of collisions when we're talking about rates. Not just about the number of collisions, or the number of collisions per second would be fine, but not just more, or not just less. Okay, So be careful with that, because you don't want to chuck away marks just by being a little bit imprecise in your explanations. Okay, hopefully um, <clears throat> you've not found that too complex really, but you've made a note of some important things there, and you can now explain why concentration, pressure and surface area will affect the rate of a chemical reaction and you've also considered why volume shouldn't affect the rate of a chemical reaction. If you've got any questions or comments please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.